everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, it's been a while since my last video. Uh, my uh, beautiful daughter has made me a grandfather and I'm very proud of that. And so I've uh, spent a couple of weeks uh, away from gaming and uh, dealing with uh, all the wonderful experiences of being a new granddad. So anyway, uh, it's time to get back to it. And as promised at the end of the last video, I wanna do a survey of our next game, which is going to be Napoleon at Waterloo. And um, the reason I wanted to do this is basically Napoleon at Waterloo is probably, for one, it's an introductory war game, and um, right now that's kind of where I'm at in my wargaming um, experiences. I'm definitely at the introductory level. Um, and in all my reading and um, researching of different games that I've bought and and um, just being on the internet and, and looking around at uh, opinions of different games and different recommendations for introductory war games, the one constant that I have found is that probably the most universally regarded introductory war game has been Napoleon at Waterloo. And the reasons for this are, you know, there's as many reasons as there are uh, people reviewing the game. But uh, it's, it's a solid system, it's a very uh, fundamental system. Um, it's a playable game, it's not so simple that it becomes, you know, boring to play. Uh, it is still very simple in terms of the big picture of wargaming, but... Um, it's just kind of universally regarded as an excellent place to start and um, I wanted to get into a little bit of the different versions of the game that have been released over the years. The game was originally released in 1971 which is um, what 43 years ago? <laughs> Hard to believe. Um, and since then it's been released several different times and to show you how much staying power the design in the game has, uh, the last release, which is which is this one by uh, Decision Games, was only released this year, and um, nothing really changed in it. I mean, they redid the artwork, um, but the rules are the same. The system is the same. Uh, the Napoleon at Waterloo system was used in. Um, many other games that came along, uh, Napoleonic games, um, Civil War games, and I just I just wanted to kind of cover at least the versions that I own. Um, I'll talk about all the different versions that the game has been released in, but we'll take a detailed look at uh, the four uh, that I own, uh, which includes the original 1971 free game, the uh, flat pack uh, game, that's this one here, that was released uh, also in 1971 that came with an advanced game. And then the re-release, uh, which I won't, it's in a box, this is actually my, <laughs> I made a box. This is funny because I had, I started getting, I, I printed it, I have a print and play version in here, actually two or three different print and play versions. And I decided to make my own box, so that's what that is. Um, and, and I won't open that now, but there's the game was re-released in 1979 in a magazine uh, format that was given away to new subscribers of Strategy and Tactics. And so basically with this video, I just kind of want to kind of go over the different versions, when they were released, what, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to get into the, all the different details and rules changes that may have occurred, but... Uh, just kind of do a slight overview of each of the uh, different uh, flavors that this game has, has come out in. So, uh, enough of the long-winded introduction. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the original 1971 release uh, of the game uh, that was sent out as a free game. All, this game, by the way, was originally designed to be a free game and an introduction to war gaming uh, from its inception. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first version. Okay, so here you see what you would have gotten in the um, uh, the first 1971 free edition of the game. Now this 
uh, isn't the first edition. This is actually the would represent what would you get in the second edition of the game. I don't actually have a copy of the first edition. Uh, there weren't too many differences. Um, I'm going to show you a uh, printout of a scan of the first edition counters. And here you can see that one difference is this uh, turn marker here was actually blank in the first edition. And uh, in, the in the second edition, you got an extra allied 1-4 infantry counter that was blank in the first edition. And that infantry counter was actually the one that you place in the Hugomont hex um, in, the, uh, in the setup, which was also a, uh, a change from the first edition. Here you can see that uh, you uh, get a... British infantry in the woods hex there in, in front of Hugomont. And um, that was, that's basically what you get. I'm going to fold this so you can kind of see what the map looks like. And I'm just trying to line this up a little bit so you can see it. Um, one other thing that was uh, incorrect, I don't know if it was incorrect in the first edition, but I'm going to flip this around. And it's, uh, it's something that was corrected in the uh, 1979 edition is the uh, north arrow looks to be about 45 degrees uh, off <laughs> in, uh, on this map. Uh, north would have been basically straight up, uh, at least according to the battlefield maps I could find online. So um, that's a look at the 1971 basic free edition of the game. Um, I think the next thing I'll show you is what the advanced expansion kit that also came out in 1971 looked like and the counters for that. Okay, so now you're looking at the advanced expansion kit and this advanced expansion kit is the one that was included in the flat pack um, that was sold as a set with the basic and advanced game together. Um, it is a kind of second edition of the uh, advanced game and um, the only thing that I could find that was a difference between uh, the first and second edition there was, if this is again, this is a scan of the first edition counters um, and these are the second edition counters here and the only difference that I could determine between the two is this counter right here in the first edition was a cavalry unit with an identifier uh, of Roman numeral 6 and in the uh, second edition that you get with the flat pack it's actually an artillery unit with uh, also the uh, Roman numeral 6 and I don't know whether that was a correction or just a change um, and by the way, any uh, information that I'm giving, if, uh, if you're watching this and you know that uh, you have more information or something I'm saying isn't exactly correct, please, I mean, I, all the information I'm getting, I kind of had to dig up from uh, various sources on the internet, and so I'm kind of relying on their accuracy. Uh, I did actually email Jim Dunnigan, and uh, he was nice enough to reply. Uh, and I did actually get a couple of questions answered through him and it was actually uh, that email that uh, where Mr. Dunnigan was describing that the, the game always was intended to be a free giveaway uh, game from the outset and that um, the reason they chose the Napoleon theme for that uh, introductory game was just that they had a, he had always wanted to design a uh, Napoleonic's game, so I just kind of thought that was an interesting little tidbit. Uh, so that's the advanced game. Um, the uh, the booklet that you get it wasn't a whole lot of additional rules. It was a brigade uh, level um, conversion, so the units were smaller uh, than in the basic game. And uh, you have a the booklet shows you know the setup for for the advanced game and provides you with the uh, with the advanced rules and uh, the first thing it says is that a lot of the basic rules still apply so these are kind of additional rules and changes or modifications to the basic game so um, that's the advanced game uh, the next thing I'll show you is basically what you got in the fat flat pack which is going to be kind of just 
what I showed you combined. So uh, we'll take a quick look at that and uh, then we'll move on to the 1979 um, reprint. Okay, so here you would see the entire uh, contents of the SPI flat pack that you would get uh, that uh, sold for about $12 back in 1971. Uh, you would have a basic counter set, the advanced counter set, and then you would have the basic rules, your map, um, and then it came with um, an article written by Redmond Simonson that's uh, fairly well known out there on the internet uh, called The Bias That Nobody Knows and the Grouchy variant, uh, Grouchy at Waterloo article. And then it's got uh, on the back some uh, examples of attacks. And then um, you have the uh, rules for the expanded game that came with the, you know, so this right here would represent the same thing as you'd get in the expansion kit. And then uh, the last thing they sent out is this uh, cover letter on the uh, the game and uh, you know that it's an introductory game and that what and it's signed by uh, Mr. Dunnigan and uh, that was basically all you got in the in the flat pack so um, I think that is going to be a wrap on the 1971 uh, version of the game that would cover edition the first edition and the second edition and then uh, the advanced and the basic and then the combined advanced basic and the flat pack so uh, the next variant or the next uh, version of the game we're going to talk about is the uh, 1979 redesign uh, that added color and a new map and um, different looking counters so we'll take a look at that now Okay, so fast forward to 1979, and uh, the good folks at SPI decided that uh, Napoleon at Waterloo needed a facelift. And so they did that in the, uh, in the form of this uh, magazine. And uh, what you would get is the, the magazine that had the, um, well, it was, it, was, it was more than just the game. It had a lot of articles on the history of wargaming, a um, little introductory uh, letter and then starting on page 9 you started with the rules and then the game map was actually in the center of the magazine and then along with the magazine you got this counter sheet. Now um, they made quite a few changes to the game in this edition a lot more than they did between the first and the second um, the first thing they did was uh, the counters uh, were redesigned and uh, rather than having the NATO symbols on them they superimposed these white uh, and silver and blue um, symbols on them for X for the infantry and the slash for the cavalry and a dot for the artillery and uh, they changed up the the counter mix a little bit the, um, the Allied counters stayed pretty much the same. They did include the extra counter that uh, wasn't in the first edition. So the Allied counters were the same as the second edition. The Prussian counters, they gave you seven extra counters, seven extra Prussian counters. And then uh, for the French, uh, the French counters were all the same counters that you got in the second edition here and here and then they gave you all of these um, reinforcement counters in addition to uh, that, that, that weren't included in the uh, first and second edition and then you have a game turn and a demoralization counter and uh, these numbered counters down here are uh, there's three sets of one through six and they were just meant to be kind of a chit draw system to replace using a six-sided die if you didn't have one but of course most people would use use a die so that was the changes to the counters. They also made quite a few changes to the map. Um, the, the map changed in that you, you no longer have, they, 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 they shrunk the map down. They basically took a single row of hexes off the west side, 
three rows of hexes off of the east side and five rows of hexes up, um, off the bottom. They just kind of lopped it off. Um, and they did correct the north arrow so that the north actually points north. And um, pretty much everything else about the setup stayed the same. Um, and then of course, you, as you can see, that they added color to the map, which was probably a, a, a big improvement. Um, I haven't played the game yet, so I'm not sure uh, you know how much difference it makes having the smaller map. So um, you know, I, I will certainly I'm going to play the game on both the large and the small maps just to see if they you know I see or feel a difference. So um, that is that, and then of course you get the rest of the uh, instructions. You get some historical information about the battle. And then here you get a nice table of NATO symbols that uh, or military unit symbols. I'm not sure if they're exactly the NATO symbols or not, but um, it's a nice reference to have. And then they also included a master, in in master index for strategy and tactics. And uh, that was also useful as well. So anyway, this was the booklet that you got. And on the back you see an ad for uh, Ares, which was a, another company that they were starting back then for uh, sci-fi games. So this was the third edition of the game. Again, it was released in 1979 and uh, represented probably, um, it, this one's probably the most, uh, what I want to say, the, the most obtainable right now. I guess you see these on eBay all the time. There were lots of them printed that they can be had you know, and get them in fairly good condition. Um, they play well, they're portable, they're, they travel well. Um, my copy was actually punched. I actually reassembled the uh, the counters back into the sprue here just to show you what the counter sheet would have looked like. And um, and that about that's about it for the 1979 uh, uh, edition. I didn't go through the rules in great detail to see if there were uh, a lot of rules changes. In fact, if you know, again, if any of uh, if any of you out there watching have uh, additional information and you want to share it in the comments section, please do so. You know, I'm always uh, trying to learn more about this game, and um, you know, it's just a subject that interests me. And uh, I guess we'll. Uh, um, go ahead and take a look at the last edition of the game uh, next which was the decision games uh, version of the Napoleon at Waterloo that was released just this year earlier this year um, next and then after that uh, we'll take a look at some of the print and play versions just a couple of notes before we take a look at the decision games version um, was there was uh, there were two more editions released um, uh, of Napoleon at Waterloo. In uh, 1981 uh, the game appeared as part of an adventure gaming um, magazine that uh, I'm going to throw up a picture of here um, that was uh, sandwiched in between uh, two other games um, and this edition again was released in uh, 1981 and uh, had a slightly you know different counter sheet with it as you can see the counters uh, it shared counters with the other two games so the layout was slightly different um, but the game was uh, itself was identical to the uh, the game from the 1979 uh, magazine game so uh, the other edition that uh, just to you know mention for historical completeness was uh, released in 1985 by Hobby Japan it was a Japanese version of the game um, I haven't seen that. I haven't even been able to locate a, a picture for it, so um, I can't show it to you, nor can I really comment on whether there were any differences made or modifications made, uh, but it does show up in the, uh, the history of the different editions for the game. So um, now we'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, latest and um, last uh, commercial release of Napoleon at Waterloo by Decision Games uh, earlier this year. Okay, so here you see the latest and current incarnation of Napoleon at Waterloo. Um, this is the Decision Games uh, 2014 release of the game. 
Um, the game itself uh, is the same game as the 79 game. The, the counter sheet is uh, identical with the exception of there's no demoralization marker. Um, but all the other counters are a one-to-one -one, uh, matchup with the 79 version. Um, what has changed is the artwork, obviously. You can see that they've uh, uh, redone the map. Um, the uh, uh, setup hexes now, instead of putting numbers on them, uh, they just have infantry symbol or uh, artillery symbol or cavalry symbol. And then for the setup numbers, you actually uh, can see those that are on the back of the... I'm going to hold it up for you. They're on the back of the counters there. So I don't know if you can see that, the numbers there. That, that's where the, you know, the new setup numbers are. So anyway... Um, the instructions are, the rules are the same, except for the rules have been rewritten. Um, and when I say rewritten, they're, they're mostly reworded. They're not just a one-to-one -one, uh, copy of the previous rules. Uh, they're reorganized a little bit, slightly, and um, the sections are, are reworded. But they basically uh, are communicating the same rules. Uh, at least as far as I was able to tell, I didn't you know do a detailed scouring of rule by rule, but uh, I did do a cursory walk through them and didn't see anything that looked too different. So, um, and their color, and they were very nicely done. So, um, I like the I, I like the re, the uh, reboot of the game. The only thing that I didn't like was that they, you know, I would have liked to have seen the bigger map. I, I'm, you know, the smaller map is uh, it's still pretty tiny. The hexes are pretty tiny. Uh, it would have been nice to uh, to have a slightly bigger map, maybe double the size. But um, other than that, uh, you know, it's a good game. Comes with the uh, dice, little plastic bags, pretty much normal for uh, modern war games. So, um, not much else to say about that. Uh, the next uh, thing we'll probably do is um, we'll go ahead and take a look at uh, some of the print and play options you have for Napoleon at Waterloo. Uh, I have a couple of different ones that I've done and um, we'll take a look at those now. Okay, so the last thing um, in Napoleon at Waterloo I wanted to cover in this video are some of the print and play options. And as you can see here, I've got an array of different maps and counter sets and to be honest you don't really have to go with one set per se you can just find a map that you like and a set of counters that you like and and use the rules and the game will play just fine um, what I wanted to do here is just kind of show you some examples that are out there uh, on on the net and on board game geek and um, None of this costs any money to download. Uh, you know, printing is obviously another story, but um, so here, the, the, let's just go over these one by one. Um, this set here is uh, I'm going to show you this. This is the basically just a reprint of the uh, map that was in the 1979 magazine edition, and as you can see, I just printed it out, uh, mounted it on a cardboard and uh, it's perfectly playable. It's a little small uh, as was the magazine uh, size which we we talked about but um, you know it's out there, it's free, very easy to do. Um, now this map here was a map that was redone and I want to give credit here um, to Damon Threat, I believe. Um, and uh, I've got it upside down, I guess, if you're looking at the numbers. But um, this is the same map. Uh, it's just done in a different color scheme. And uh, you can compare it there if you want. And um, very nice, very attractive. Um, he went ahead and put the unit symbols uh, for setting up the game on there, just like the original map. Uh, the, Colors just a little darker and deeper, 
and then we've got the uh, combat results table and the game turn track over here and the terrain effects chart uh, just as the original did. Uh, that's another option. Um, now I'm going to save this one for last because this is a little bit different. Um, but the other thing I did was I went ahead and I made my own booklet um, of rules and this was uh, um, just something I put together from stuff that I downloaded off of uh, Alan Emmerich's site. Uh, there's basically the same thing that you would find in the rules folder. I had this bound at um, Kinko's but it's basically just a collection of the different um, documents that you can get online. I just wanted to have them bound in a book. But that's one option you can do. I think it costs like three or four dollars to get the thing spiral bound so that you have more of a, a nice collection. And then I went ahead and added the um, couple different versions of the rules, the original scan of the 79 rules in here, uh, a lot of redundant stuff that you probably don't need. Um, this, uh, this is an advanced expansion kit rule set, so it's there. And then I went ahead at the end and I put in some review information, some strategy notes. Here's the Redmond Simonson article about the, the bias nobody knows. It's a pretty well-known article on Napoleon at Waterloo. And just stuff like that. So that's another option for you. Uh, now what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. I'm going to lay out some of the counters so that I can zoom in on them and you can see what they look like. And uh, we'll take a look at that right now. Okay, so here you see the, uh, the two sets of counters that I have printed um, for the basic game. And uh, they're, they're basically, you know, one is as good as the other. Uh, this set here is actually double-sided, so you've got the little flag uh, for each country on the back. Um, that was a little bit of a challenge, actually, to do those because you have to align the front and the back. So... And then these are a little thinner, and uh, and they're only single-sided, but you know every bit is playable. Um, and just to give credit, uh, the set here, uh, the first set here is uh, was uploaded on Board Game Geek by uh, Pedro Baradas, and um, then the set you see here on the right is uh, from Timothy Sweetster. So I just like to give credit, you know, to these people who you know put a lot of work into creating these. And um, that's uh, that's just two of the options. There's uh, there's several other sets out on the on the internet. Um, these are just two of the ones I thought were, were most attractive. And then of course you know you obviously you've already seen the uh, uh, the counters that uh, that come with the commercial games. So you know in some cases the you know these might even be a better option than those. So even if you do have the commercial game, you may still want to print out another more uh, colorful or modern set of counters, more attractive set. So uh, that's that's going to do it for the basic game uh, print and play options, at least the ones that I have to show you. Um, and then I said I was kind of holding off on uh, on this uh, this larger one over here. I'm going to show you that right now. Uh, and the reason I want to do this separate is because it's, a, it's the advanced expansion um, that uh, Tom Kranicki did and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that right now. One other quick thing I wanted to mention was that um, the option that I chose for storing the counters, at least for this game, were these uh, these little Ziploc bags and I got these at an art or craft supply store, Hobby Lobby I think is where I got these, and then just use mailing labels and print out the, uh, the different um, you know, divisions of the counters that, you know, however you want to sort them. Um, I know other people use trays. Um, I find that when I use trays, unless I get a certain kind of trays that seals the counters very well, they tend to kind of slide from one compartment to the other. And I know other people are using little plastic bins and stuff, but at least for this game, this was a cheap, uh, <clears throat> cheap option for me. Uh, it was quick, effective, and it allowed me to sort them out and put labels on them. So anyway, it's just one option. I just wanted to show it to you real quick. I thought I'd make mention of it since it had to do with the counters. 
So, uh, okay, now we'll take a look at the, uh, the advanced expansion uh, print play option. Okay, so the very last thing I want to cover in this uh, video is this um, advanced expansion uh, print and play uh, set that was done by Tom Kranicki. And um, I decided to print this one out in more of a large uh, format using nine eight and a half by eleven um, squares of paper. And I, I right now they're just loose. Um, I haven't decided how or if I'm going to try to mount them or bind them together in some sort of a folding board type thing or if I'll just leave them like this because I usually play uh, with a piece of plexiglass over it anyway. Um, anyway, it's, it's, it was just a beautiful treatment in my, my estimation. I, I can't tell you, I have not read his uh, rule set that he submitted with this to tell you if it's any different than the um, SPI advanced game and I haven't done a comparison on the counter sheet either to tell you whether there's uh, differences in the counters, so I apologize for that. Um, the counters were actually the subject of my uh, video on making your own counters print and play, so if you want to see uh, close-ups and um, uh, what those counters look like, uh, take a look at that video. Um, they're very well done also, and um, anyway, it's just kind of to show you uh, what's available out there in the print and play world. Uh, again, you know, there's, it, you know, it's just such a cool thing to be able to have these games available uh, in the public domain because um, they're they're quality games and they're a lot of fun to play. And uh, just thank you to all the the people out there that have done this work. And um, you know, they're not even asking for any kind of financial compensation to, to be able to enjoy it. So um, that's going to wrap up this video. Uh, the next video will be um, actually getting into the, the game itself. I haven't decided which, uh, <laughs> which uh, version of the game I'm going to use in the video yet. I'll have to take a look uh, and see what, the, uh, what they look like on camera. So um, it'll be a little while before the next video. I know this video, I'm sorry again, this video was a long time in coming. Um, it just took a little while to put together, but um, I want to play the game a couple times before I do the next video so I can speak more intelligently about the, uh, the mechanics and uh, my thoughts on it and my thoughts on learning it and um, what, it, uh, what it had to teach me in terms of playing these war games. So thank you for watching. Um, again, I'll try to get that done as soon as I can. For the next video, I promise not to take you know horribly long between these uh, between the videos, and uh, we'll see you next time.